China, 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 nearly 9,000 kilometers away from home. Call it a midlife crisis, but this is the country I unexpectedly ended up living. But first, let me catch you up on some details. With close to 200 countries on this place we call Earth, I could have been born in any one of them. But thanks to my wonderful parents, I was born in the one I patriotically think is the best in the world, Australia. You might know it as the home to some friendly animals. and maybe some not so friendly ones too. I've lived in a few places on the East Coast, but my home of late has been the biggest city in the country, Sydney. Now this is the iconic Sydney Opera House. No matter how many times I see this view, I keep getting reminded of what a beautiful city I live in. Let me introduce myself. My name is Brian and I'm just your typical fun-loving Australian that loves to have a laugh, stay fit, enjoys travel, and can't resist good food like anybody else. But I'm a little different. I'm what you would call an ABC, an Australian-born Chinese. I was born in Australia, and my dad is Chinese, hence ABC. We also jokingly call each other bananas, you know, yellow on the outside and white on the inside. Cheesy in-jokes aside, on the inside, my ideologies and lifestyle are all Australian. Everything from the clothes I wear, to the sports I love, to the food I eat. When I was a kid, my parents tried to teach me Mandarin, and also enrolled me into Chinese school on the weekend, but I just wasn't that interested. I have to admit, I was a pretty naughty kid, but I wanted to be like all of my other Australian friends and speak English. I really didn't see the need for much else. For a long time, I neglected my Chinese heritage and focused my energies on being as Australian as I could. And from that, a disparity between my country of birth and country of origin began to heavily weigh to one side. Sure, being Chinese was part of my heritage, but sometimes it didn't really feel that way. It was only when I caught a glimpse of my reflection in a window or saw myself in a mirror that I remembered, oh yeah, I'm Chinese. On the one side, I had my Chinese looks and on the other, I had my Australian heart. I was in some sort of unconventional identity limbo. Apart from celebrating Chinese New Year and taking my shoes off before entering the house, on paper, you wouldn't think I was Chinese. It wasn't until I became an adult I started becoming more dissatisfied with the side of me I neglected for so long and yearned for some balance. My lack of Mandarin speaking skills started becoming more obvious in various aspects of my life and that was just the tip of the iceberg. I decided it was time to get a little bit more serious so I made a conscious effort to embrace this side of me and bring more balance between my Australian upbringing and my Chinese heritage. There were lots of different ways I could have done this, but learning Mandarin Chinese, the most widely spoken language in the world, felt like it was going to be the most prized to get back into reconnecting and understanding my heritage. I looked into courses at community colleges and local universities, but for some reason or another, I didn't find them particularly inspiring. My brother had previously done a short course at the Beijing Language and Culture University in China. And after a bit of research, it seemed that studying there would offer me more than just the opportunity to study the language. Being ground zero on Chinese territory, living in the great capital of Beijing, would only give me a better appreciation of the history, culture and the country. That sounded like a plan, a real plan. And to kick it into action, I would have to take the leap and move to China. Stop. Wait a second. After I concocted this groundbreaking plan, doubt kicked in, and I began to wonder if I was getting ahead of myself and over-romanticising the whole situation. This shouldn't be a simple decision to make, I thought. It was going to be a huge deviation from my current lifestyle, and there were a lot of important things for me to consider. The first thing, of course, being money. Financially, this was a horrible move to make. Not only would I not make any income while I was in China, 
but I would also have to pay additional expenses like school fees, rent, food and entertainment. On top of that, I wouldn't be advancing my position in the corporate world. A career I'd spent four years at university building and years after that gaining experience. Returning back to work with Mandarin skills in my back pocket would be something extra I could put on my CV. But we only speak English at work, so it would do very little for my career, if anything at all. Another big consideration was, well, my age. Believe it or not, this is me on my 32nd birthday. The age I would be turning after being in China for only a few months. Yes, I know I don't look my age, and I certainly don't act my age at times, but I have my wonderful parents and the incredibly potent Asian genes to thank for the youthfulness, and no one else to blame but myself for the immaturity. Maturity aside, something I knew I would have to accept was potentially being the grandpa of the class, like this guy. I wasn't expecting any of my classmates would be my age. My brother was in his early 20s when he went to study there and that was most likely going to be the average age, a full decade younger than me. Along with my supposed responsibilities as a member of the 30s club, some would argue that my focus should be on things like settling down and advancing my career. Going to China would mean leaving the life in Australia I was so comfortable with. From a city I knew and loved, leaving the comforts of a modern apartment close to the city, along with my friends and family, into a country where I didn't speak the language, where I didn't know anybody, I had no job, I would have to do homework and live in a student's dormitory. It felt like I was going back in time and downgrading my life. But without major responsibilities tying me down to Sydney, I had the means and the youth, or what was left of it, to be unrestrained and recklessly pursue the things I was passionate about. There's a saying that goes, 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the ones that you did do. I decided learning Mandarin wasn't going to be one of them. I needed to be in China and without any distractions or excuses to push me off course. Without giving myself the opportunity to talk myself out of it, I jumped in headfirst and tried to get on a plane as quickly as possible. Going to China would mean leaving the life in Australia I was so comfortable with. I enrolled, and applied for my visa, booked my flights and away I went. I resolved myself to spend the present embracing the culture I've neglected for so long. If I didn't take drastic action now, I would never do it. My strategy was simple, full immersion. I placed myself in a position where I was forced to speak the language and complement that by spending serious time in the classroom and surely I'd be fluent in no time. Surprisingly, the more I thought about it, the more I knew it was the right decision and the more excited I became. I dusted off some old Chinese books I used to have and tried to prepare as best I could by clearing out as many cobwebs in my mind as possible. After a long absence from formal classroom study, I'd have to try to adapt to being a full-time student again. Libraries would have to become familiar places. I would have to use my computer for more than just social media, reading the news and surfing the net. Paying attention, taking notes, writing essays, it was all going to give my brain a good workout. It wouldn't be easy, and I was definitely going to make some mistakes along the way but all in the hope of realizing my goal, to embrace my heritage and be fluent in Chinese. Australia to China, here we go. Hi guys, thanks for watching the video. Just before I go, I've got a couple of things that I wanted to run by you guys. Firstly, it's a bit of background behind the whole story. Uh, in early 2015, that was when I made the decision to move from Australia across to Beijing to learn Mandarin full time. So fast forward to the present, it's currently August 2017, two and a half years later, and I'm in Australia. So there's a lot to update you on. If you stay tuned, I'll give you the rundown, the whole rundown on everything soon. Secondly, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, please share it and hit that big red subscribe button below. Thanks again for watching and looking forward to sharing more with you soon.